Let's talk about the most common cause, at least in developed countries, of peripheral neuropathy, which is diabetes. So the typical di diabetic neuropathy, again, is a distal symmetric neuropathy. It starts very gradually. They can't really date when it started. It slowly gets worse over time. It involves sensory nerves more than motor nerves. It's rare for them to have much weakness. They may have slight distal weakness, like with toe movements or standing on their heels, but it's predominantly sensory symptoms that they're going to complain of. Um, and it's fairly prevalent in this population. So patients that have diabetes long enough, more than 50% of them can develop neuropathy. And as I alluded to in the prior slide, that it doesn't take full diabetes to get neuropathy. You can get it from prediabetes. I would also be aware that diabetes can cause other forms of more focal neuropathy as opposed to the classic distal symmetric neuropathy. One of the most classic forms is called diabetic amyotrophy. Um, and this is an acute inflammatory neuropathy involving the lumbar plexus, especially the femoral nerve distribution. So they present with acute onset of pelvic or leg pain and develop usually quite profound uh, motor weakness of the quadricep muscle group. It's common for diabetes to affect the peripheral autonomic nerves. This is generally not an isolation, but in patients that have diabetic neuropathy, it's very common that they, especially as the neuropathy gets more severe, that they have autonomic findings, which probably most commonly is going to be orthostatic hypotension, but they can develop other problems like impotence, constipation, impaired sweating, et cetera. I would also remember that diabetes due to small vessel disease can affect the nerves to the eye muscles. So the, ex the abducens nerve or the, or the oculomotor nerve, and it, it's essentially a nerve infarct. Uh, it's microvascular disease with diabetes as the risk factor. Treatment, of course, glycemic control. I don't know that you would ever be asked about this, but I would remember it's very rare, but you can also get a treatment-induced neuropathy. I've seen this a few times. Patients that start with a hemoglobin A1C that's raging out of control, say it's 15% or something like that, and they are rapidly lowered to toward a more normal range, say over a couple months, and that that can somehow unleash a neuropathy. It's rare, but it, it happens. Um, you really can't treat this condition other than just managing neuropathic pain. And as I alluded to in an earlier slide, there's a variety of medications we use for that, tricyclic antidepressants, duloxetine, gabapentin, pregabalin, et cetera.